How are people feeling about the economy and the markets? Well, you just had Lloyd on, and I think he did a really nice job, uh, not only on CNBC, but yesterday with our uh, constituents of our clients and talking about a whole host of things from politics to business. And I think people, for the most part, are feeling fairly good. But what's interesting about the overall markets is we're seeing volumes dip off significantly on these rallies and on the breaks, which tells me there's a lot of people on the sidelines. As you know, Scott, I'm a big fan of your show and I watch it a lot, and you've got traders on your desk, and some of them have been talking a different position than they have historically over the last several years, which tells me they're either out, lightened up, waiting for a break to buy. That's so that's a lot about where I think the market's at right now, and that's where you're hearing a lot of sentiment come from different uh, places around in the asset classes. There's a suggestion that some of that money is going to come into the market between now and the end of the year and push things even higher. Do you buy that? I, I would not be surprised by that. You know, it's not for me to, to predict if money is going to come into the market. I can only tell you what I'm seeing on flows. And I look at prices and I look at flows. When you're looking at the amount of flows that's coming into the market, the amount of volume coming in, it's a lot less than it should be when you're having these new records highs set every time or record lows in interest rates. So you're seeing volume dip off with these moves, which tells me a lot of people are out of the market, which means one thing. they got to come back in eventually. Okay, the other thing you watch closely, I know, is volatility. I do. Which is... Almost non-existent. Right. It's, it's unbelievable how the volatility went from the story of the day to non-existent, but yet some of the re prices are not reflecting non-existent, even though the daily volatility that we were watching has seemed to taper quite a bit over the last month or so. You think that comes back? I do. I just think there's too many unknowns in the world. You, you just had a guest down with Lloyd talking about a whole host of things. It's almost impossible for volatility not to come back into the equation. You have uncertainty in Britain. You've got an election coming up December 12th. You have an election coming up here in the United States uh, next year, and it couldn't be more polarizing in which way the, the markets could go because of the direction of who is going to sit in the Oval Office. So that's going to create uncertainty. I think 2020 could be a very volatile year for a whole host of reasons. I'll play off another thing that Lloyd said since you, you're referencing it. Maybe all of those risks are mitigated by one thing, and that's central bank easing, not only here but everywhere else. And maybe that's the, pardon the pun, the Trump card that supersedes everything. I, you know, I, I've heard you and your colleagues talk about the Fed quite a bit. And from where I sit, I, I think, well, how much lower can they go and how much of an effect can they have on the overall marketplace? I think we're at the point right now where they have zero effect. I don't think the U.S. is going to negative rates, and I don't think they're going to raise in the near term anytime soon. So what really, what role is the Fed going to play in the United States? There's $14 trillion that are getting negative rates globally today, and it's not going very well for those people that are participating in that. So they're going to look for different asset classes to participate in. But wouldn't you in some respects, go out further on the risk curve if you knew that you had a quote-unquote insurance policy in your back pocket of the Fed? I don't think it's an insurance policy, Scott. I just have a different viewpoint of it. I don't know what the insurance is. I guess I would, anytime you buy insurance, you normally know what the insurance is for. So if you're telling me the Fed's going to bail me out and take the equities higher, I don't buy that argument. The equities have gone to record highs with the Fed basically rate tightening three times, and now here we are with uh, rate cuts over the last two sessions. We're, this, the market has said we don't care what the Fed does. Where do you think rates are going? Like 10-year, what, what do you think makes sense You know, it's hard to, to predict you. where the rates are. I'm here to manage the risk of the 10-year, the 2, the 5s, and everything else. But it is interesting that um, it's hard to believe that they're going to continue to stay inverted. And I, and I have a hard time thinking that rates are going to stay this low forever. But, you know, where everybody's watching the inflation number, we got sub-2% inflation. So there's really no reason for the rates to do much. It doesn't mean people don't have rate exposure, though, Scott. And I think that's what people are missing. Credit card uh, interest rates are 20%. We've got $1.6 trillion in credit card debt. We have $46 trillion in mortgages with a whole host of different uh, durations of interest rates associated. People need to manage that risk. So even though the rates may not be going anywhere in the near term, you and I don't get Fed fund borrowing rates. So there's a whole host of exposures and interest rates, even though they're not moving. Do you leap you're making into Bitcoin even further options starting <laughs> next year? I'm a big believer, Scott, that options help the credibility of any futures contract to build that ecosystem of futures and options together. Um, we have now listed the futures for a year. It's become somewhat attractive to people. So the options was a natural thing next to do. It doesn't mean we're going to go into other cryptos. So I've said from day one, I will walk, not run into this. I don't want people who have never traded futures trading Bitcoin on CME. I want sophisticated uh, participants in the marketplace. You may get some speculators in there, though. You might get some speculators. Terry, thanks for having us. Thank, uh, Always a pleasure it, being Thank here. you. That's